Hello, I'm Simon Adebisi and welcome to highlights of the 2012 Formula Sim Racing World Championship. Round 11 is the German Grand Prix. Set around the Nürburgring, this track is one of the shortest on the calendar and features an interesting array of corners. The opening turn is incredibly tight as is the immediately following arena section. However, the track then opens out to predominantly moderate speed turns. The opening corner and the chicane in the final sector present the most obvious places for overtaking, with minimal opportunities occurring elsewhere. Defending champion Bono Huiz crucially took pole position at his team's home Grand Prix, edging out main rival Morgan Moran for the top spot. Precision's second driver Jack Keithley took third place ahead of GT Amiga's Jeffrey Rietveld. Gogo Baldi continued his strong form to take fifth, and in his maiden WC event, Tommy Nelson set the sixth fastest time, completing a good result for GT Amiga. Yannick Lapchan had a good session taking seventh place. Patrick DeVitt got his Mack Core car up into eighth, and in his second appearance in the WC this season, Mark Albert set the ninth fastest time. Twister's Peter Burlack rounded out the top 10. Jim Parisis just missed out on Q2, starting in 11th place. John Eric Saxon had an average session to take 12th, and making his second appearance, Antonio Coloretz qualified in 13th for Matcor Racing. AT Racing's Sebastiano Filosa would start from 14th, and Australia's Blair Disley qualified in 15th position. Off the start line, it was Morgan Morand who had a brilliant launch, easily getting alongside Huiz and taking the lead after just a few seconds. However, it was Huiz who proved to be more brave under braking, and he amazingly retook his first position around the outside. Further behind, Burlak came together with DeVitt, resulting in both Parisis and Coloritz losing their front wings as they were caught up in the congestion. Staking their way through the arena section, Lapchan and Nilsson were side by side when Orbitz made an over-optimistic move up the inside, bumping Lapchan off the circuit. Moran challenged Huiz again into turn five, but Huiz stood his ground with Keithley taking half a look up Moran's inside. Lap two, when there was no change to the running order of the top six drivers. In seventh place, Mark Orbitz had a slide out of turn four, nearly losing control and dropping down behind Patrick De Witt. Meanwhile, Yannick Lapchan moved back up into 10th position, passing Peter Burlak through the opening corner. As the race progressed, it became apparent that overtaking was nigh on impossible around the Nürburgring, with no overtaking occurring until lap five. Desperately trying to repass the Witt, Mark Orbitz missed his braking point, narrowly avoiding a heavy collision and dropping a place to Saxon. Orbitz rejoined the track and he and Lapchan made contact through turn 11, with Orbitz making another mistake on the exit, costing him and Lapchan more valuable time. Several laps later, the Ash Racing driver ran wide through Turn 1, dropping in behind both Lapchan and Burlak. By the time the first round of stops began, Bono Huiz had only established less than a two-second lead over Morgan Moran. Jack Keithley was in third ahead of Jeffrey Rietveld in fourth and Gergo Baldi in fifth. Tommy Nelson was making a good impression in sixth place and Patrick De Witt was in seventh, though it was clear that eighth place John Eric Saxon had the faster pace but was unable to find a way around. Lap 10 and Jack Heathley made a surprisingly early stop for what was apparently a five-stop strategy. Peter Burlak also pitted early to repair damage he suffered in the opening lap. The Twister driver lost several seconds under repair and would still have to drive with a slightly damaged car. The top four drivers then all pitted simultaneously, with all on a four-stop strategy. However, on exit, Jack Keithley was able to just leap ahead of Moran, separating him from Bono Huis. Moran quickly attacked Keithley into turn 11, but he was unable to make the move stick. The Ghost Speed driver was clearly faster, but was held up by Keithley, with the precision driver defending his position hard as Huis escaped further ahead. Eventually, Moran outwitted Keithley through the chicane, slipping up the Britons inside, but Keithley came back at the Frenchman, and down into turn one, the pair made moderate contact, with Moran dropping back into third place. Elsewhere on track, Patrick De Witt revealed himself to be only three stopping, and he emerged on track in eighth place, though he had a strong chance of outdoing four stopping John Eric Saxon in seventh. Just behind De Witt, Yannick Lapchan had a day to forget as the ATR driver lost control out of the Ford curve, sliding onto the grass where the Frenchman stalled his engine. Peter Varga was now up into 10th place from the back of the grid, and after a difficult start, Peter Burlak was on an amazing charge up through the field, first taking Giuseppe Marconi, then Michael Francisconi down the main straight, Blair Disley into the Ford curve, 
And then Uros Muskuli with a difficult outside pass around turn one, moving the Croatian way up into 11th position. Back at the front, and as Bono Huy sailed away with the race lead, Morgan Moran was still fighting to find his way around Jack Keithley, but with the German circuit offering next to nothing in the way of overtaking opportunities, it was only when the Briton finally pitted that Moran was able to set his full pace. But by now, Huis already had over a seven second gap over his rival. The second set of stops for the four stoppers again put Moran back behind Jack Keithley. And just as with the first stint, Moran lost more time as he was unable to find any opportunity to make a pass. And the Frenchman had to wait a frustrating five laps until Keithley pitted again. Just behind, Jeffrey Rietveld remained in fourth. And the three stopping Patrick De Witt was now temporarily up into fifth, having yet to make his second stop. He was soon caught by Gergo Baldi and the two entered into the arena section side by side. Baldi then switched to the inside of the track to try and get a better line, but David stuck to his guns and drove smoothly on the outside. Again, Baldi switched to the inside and with a much better run out of the corner, the Netrex driver was able to make the pass on the straight just before turn five. Further behind, Burlak continued to move up the order, leapfrogging Peter Varga for 10th. And meanwhile, things got worse for ATR as Uros Muskuli's pit limiter malfunctioned and he was handed a stop-go penalty. Tommy Nelson also suffered a disaster in pit lane as he failed to engage his limiter properly and he too was given a stop-go penalty, dropping the Swede well out of the points. Once again at the front, it looked like Keithley would just get ahead of Moran, though this time it would be a much closer affair. Moran exited pit lane as Keithley came down the main straight, and as Moran took the wide line, Keithley switched to the inside and just managed to get out in front. As with before, Moran had no chance to get around the precision driver, with the dirty air causing too much understeer. Two laps later, Moran was close behind when Keithley made a minor mistake running slightly wide. Moran kept right in Keithley's draft and managed to get a stronger run out of the arena section. With Moran on the outside, Keithley squeezed him as much as he could and the two entered into turn five, side by side with Moran seemingly getting ahead. But out of the forward curve, Moran lost traction and he slipped into Keithley and both cars slammed into the barrier, sustaining massive damage. Keithley had lost a wheel and Moran was unable to continue, suffering a major blow to his championship campaign. Bono Huis was now comfortably in the race lead and Jeffrey Rietveld found himself in second, easily ahead of Gergo Baldi in third. Patrick De Witt's strategy looked to have worked well, putting the Dutchman up into fourth place, though fifth place John Eric Saxon was slowly closing down on him. Mark Orbitz was up into sixth place, but sadly he was yet another driver to breach the pit speed limit and he was handed a drive-through penalty, dropping him behind Peter Burlak. Taking season win number seven, Bono Huis won the German Grand Prix with a dominating win, pole position and the fastest lap. The young Dutchman now one step closer to securing the 2012 title. Jeffrey Rietveld once again finished on the podium, demonstrating his ability to mix it with the best. And crossing the line in third place, Hungarian Gergo Baldi continued his strong form in his maiden FSR year. Patrick De Witt's strategy helped to put the Matcor driver up into fourth place with a strong run. John Eric Saxon once again crossed the line in fifth position, and Peter Burlak made an amazing comeback after his first lap troubles to finish in sixth. Despite several minor mistakes, Mark Orbit still managed to take seventh place. Clay Disley's three stop strategy helped put the Silver Line driver up into the points, and starting from the back of the grid, Peter Varga drove a strong, clean race to claim ninth position. Making his debut, Tommy Nelson showed that he has the pace to race towards the front, and despite his pit lane errors, he picked up the final point in 10th position. Looking at the driver standings now, and Huis has extended his lead with 25 unanswered points, bringing his lead over Moran to 47 points with just four rounds remaining. Rebeld has jumped up into third place on the ladder, with Tarly's continued absence dropping him down into fourth. Bowdy's great result means he is now a chance to claim third overall in the standings, Patrick De Witt has jumped up into 6th position. Saxon is now in equal 7th place along with Frederick Nilsson and Van Dorn and Lapjam remains in 10th place. To the Constructors, and Precision once again picked up the most points today, extending their lead with an almost certain claim on the 2012 trophy. GT Amiga gained 19 points over Go Speed today, but will no doubt have a fight on their hands to keep in 2nd place. Netrex Grand Prix are now into 5th ahead of Twister Racing for the first time this season. Macor remain in 7th and faster than speed have moved back up into 8th position.
The next race will be the Japanese Grand Prix, and you can watch that race live as it happens at Sim Race TV on the 30th of September at 4 p.m. GMT. And don't forget to check out the Formula Sim Racing Fantasy League as well as Formula Sim Racing on both Facebook and on Twitter. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I'm Simon Adebisi, and we'll see you in a fortnight's time for the next round of the 2012 Formula Sim Racing World Championship.